The 2024 tornado season is coming in fast, and you want to know how many tornadoes you will see this spring. So this is your 2024 tornado forecast. But before we get into my prediction, we have to figure out why I believe this and the research. So as you can see right here from climate.gov, here are the influences of the El Nino and La Nina on the spring tornado season. So this is from March to May. As you can see on the left is El Nino, and on the right is La Nina. So those orange colors mean less tornadoes and those purple colors mean more tornadoes. At the bottom here you can see the tornado frequency. So the darkest purples are plus four and the uh, darker oranges are minus four. So as you can see El Nino, it doesn't have much of an effect except for this area right over here. Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, and Kansas. This area right here has a little bit less tornadoes than average. But then if you have a La Nina spring, then you can see right over here, you get at least four more tornadoes right over here in this area that we just listed. So La Nina has a much greater effect than El Nino does on tornado season. With El Nino, you get more of tropical currents coming down here and bringing a lot of rain to the southeast. But then with La Nina over here, then you normally get that warm current that uh, kind of rides the polar jet stream and normally in the way of cold fronts. So the main takeaway here is that La Nina has a pretty large effect on the Oklahoma-Arkansas borders. And then the storm that inhibits uh, tornadoes most of the time, those are supercells. And most of the time, the storms that inhibit hail are also supercells. So why don't we look at the frequency of hail storms with El Nino on the left and La Nina on the right. So as you can see, once again, it has a El Nino has a greater effect on hailstorms than it does on tornadoes. So as you can see, in that same general area, this time more of the Red River, uh, as you can see from Texas and Oklahoma. And then uh, as you can see in La Nina, once again, it's the Red River, but then also that Oklahoma-Arkansas border, as we were seeing in the tornadoes. And then also from climate.gov, here is a sector, which is the sector we've been looking at, this area right here. And this right here is the La Nina or neutral or El Nino. This is the average severe events that happen in this area. So severe winds, severe hail, and tornadoes. So as you can see with La Nina, as you can see, this box and whisker chart is a lot like higher than all the other ones. So as you can see with La Nina, you get around 130 and as the average, and with neutral, you get around 90-ish. And with El Nino, you get around 70-ish. Now that's great that you've told me all this stuff, but what are we gonna be for this spring? So this spring, it's actually gonna be quite different than other springs. So from University of Columbia's Climate School, as you can see right over here, these are the model predictions for the ENSO or basically the El Nino or La Nina. So as you can see, we currently right over here, this is uh, December, January, February. So we're in February right over here. As you can see, we are still in an El Nino effect as we were this winter. Uh, but all the models are saying that this is going to trend downward. So right here, MAM, that is March, April, May, that is peak tornado season. So right here, as you can see, it shows kind of a weak uh, El Nino or a neutral effect. Some models are showing the La Nina, uh, but not all of them. A better graphic to look at is this. So this is the probabilities of either La Nina, neutral, or El Nino. And as you can see right here, March, April, and May, as you can see right here, there is a greater probability of El Nino, but once we get through March, then it will be a way greater probability of neutral. So we are going to be basically neutral this spring, which we don't have all too often. The reason why we're having this is because uh, we're transitioning from an El Nino this winter to next winter will be a La Nina. This is our tornado probabilities right here. So basically what neutral means is it's a weak El Nino and a weak La Nina. So you basically just take the average of both of these. And since there are more tornadoes in La Nina than El Nino, you would expect to see one or two more tornadoes in average here, as this one is only negative two. And this is plus four. So you would expect to see one or two more. So not the full effect of La Nina, but a little bit of the La Nina effect on this. And then in hailstones as well, uh, you would have a slight bias to the La Nina side as there are greater values over here. And then right over here, this perfectly does the neutral. As you can see, it's a bit more biased on the La Nina side than the El Nino side. And then a few more things we want to look at. So this is the Climate Prediction Center from NOAA. 
Uh, so as you can see, this is the three month outlooks. Obviously, these are not perfect and as good as like the one month or eight to 14 day outlooks. But this is the three month outlook from March, April and May for 2024. So as you can see, the temperatures, uh, once you're in the long range, you can't really make any predictions on tornado season about it. Really, the thing that you want to look at is the seasonal precipitation outlook. Because precipitation, if you have more rain than average, you'll have more chances for tornadoes. But anyways, as you can see, above average precipitation in that Kansas, Nebraska area, and then also in the south down here by Florida area, down there you've already seen quite a few tornadoes near Tallahassee. So you already have seen probably at least 10 down there in Florida this year, so quite a lot in Florida. And then if you're making predictions, one other thing you want to do is compare your predictions to other people who have made predictions. So here is Dr. Reed Timmer. This is his 2024 tornado forecast. So as you can see, above average tornadoes right over here in this area, Oklahoma, Nebraska, this area that we're talking about, and Florida. And then all these uh, yellowish green areas, that's below average. Uh, so that's a wide area below average. I don't really agree with him as much at how wide this below average area is. But that's why I made my own forecast. And then Broderick Howard, he also did a 2024 tornado forecast. His tornado forecast is from May to June. And as you can see right here, he said Oklahoma area, this area that we're kind of talking about. But then he also included Alabama, which we were not talking about before. So also got to take that into account as well. And then I know you've been waiting for it. So here is my 2024 tornado season prediction. So let's start off with how many tornadoes you normally see per year. So starting off right over here, these are the pink contours, which is where you see a lot of tornadoes. So places like the Great Plains, Iowa, Illinois, Florida, and places like that. And then we will go into these areas that see quite a few tornadoes per year. This is anywhere from 31 to 50 tornadoes per year. So this is quite a few states filling in the gaps between the pink states. And then right over here in the orange, these are states that see around 19 to 30 tornadoes every year, including me in North Carolina. And then in the yellow, this is where you get 6 to 10 tornadoes. Pretty rare to see a tornado in one of these states. And then filling in the gaps here are states that get 0 to 5 tornadoes. If your state is not labeled, that's because it has 2 or less tornadoes per year. Now take the value that I just associated with your state and then subtract or add it to that based on this graphic right here. So starting with the below average numbers in these areas like Arizona, New Mexico, and then up there in Montana and uh, the Dakotas, you will probably see around two less tornadoes this year. And then plus two tornadoes is a wide area of the Southeast and the Great Plains. So you're likely to see at least plus two tornadoes this year. And then two plus five areas right where we're talking about with Oklahoma, Arkansas border, and then also in Florida down there. And then put it all together, and this is very likely to see above or below average tornadoes this year. So I hope you did enjoy, and be sure to like and subscribe. Special thanks to all resources I used. They will all be in the description as well. And I hope you have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next storm.